Okay, best friends, let's jump right into this video. How to stop people pleasing and stand on your boundaries, sis, okay? Coming in at number one, this is extremely important. Don't do this. I used to do this all the time. And when I say people used to play in my face, and I used to get hurt so badly by doing this, thinking that it was a good thing, don't do it. Because people ain't going to respect you. And that is never, I mean never, apologize when you are not wrong. I know what you're thinking. Sis, why would I apologize to someone if I wasn't wrong? Because if you have a big heart and you are empath like me, and you're the type of person that you love people so much, you love and cherish and value the relationships in your life, before you cut someone off, you're going to always try to fight for it, make it work. You know, you want to be the bigger person because your mentality, mentality, what? <laughs> your mentality is, you know what? This is so stupid. This argument is so petty. Like, I love my sister. I love my man. I love my mom. I, whatever, whoever it is that you have a conflict in your life. You love these people. They've been in your life for a long time, whatever. And it's like, you guys had a big blowout fight argument. Both of you guys are not speaking. What happens is, usually, the person that's the more empathetic one, right, is going to you know, extend the olive branch, be the bigger person. You're going to turn the other cheek. Hey, or you're going to text them or call them. Hey, I feel like we should talk. I just want to say, I'm sorry for the things I've said. I was just hurt. You know what happens? Because usually if you apologizing first, the other person is a narcissist. And you know what they're going to think when you apologize first to people, especially when you was not wrong, they're going to think whatever they did to you wasn't that bad because if it was that bad why are you apologizing to them first why are you being the bigger person they're not they're not such a bad person after all but little do they know i mean the only reason why i'm even apologizing to your ass number one is because i love you and i i just want to extend grace over you you know what i'm saying i'm willing to forgive you because this is petty you know what i'm saying i don't want to lose our friendship i don't want to lose you know, you in my life, you know, I just want you to know I was hurt. I'm I'm, I'm, I apologize for my delivery and what I did. Guess what? Nine times out of 10, when you be the bigger person and you apologize first, you would think they would, they will in their mind, they'll be like, wow, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for apologizing. I'm sorry too. I should have never, if I made you feel this way, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. What's going to happen is you're going to apologize to them and they can be like, oh, okay, thank you. All right, like, let's get cool again. I know it's with people that I apologize first to. They never, not one of them ever said like, well, I apologize too because, you know, I could see how that would make you feel or, you know, how you would think that was fake or weird of me to do. That was weird. I'm sorry. That was weird. I need to work on that. I don't know why I did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't, I don't even know why, you know, I said this or I did that. I'm, I'm sorry. They never take accountability. That's what usually happens when you interact with narcissistic people. I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you right now, 95% of the world is narcissistic. I, I'm, I, I, that's what I feel. In my experience, like, I always feel like, comment below if this has ever happened to you. You're always the one to turn the other cheek. You're always the one to be the bigger person and make things right because of how much you love and cherish the people in your life. But you don't get that same energy. They don't match that energy. I'm telling you right now, toxic people, people that are fake, deep down, they have secret animosity. Deep down, they don't really like you. Um, they're literally banking on the fact. They know that you have a good heart. One thing I noticed that People, right, people will rather not speak to you than to make it right. They know they dead ass wrong, right? But they rather go through, they rather lose a good woman. That man rather lose you, ghost you because he's embarrassed because he got caught up in something or he got caught up in a lie. That friend, right, that friend that, that you were so good to, even and she know you was good to her, she rather lose the friendship than to, there's some people that rather they will prefer to lose a whole relationship with you, a whole friendship with you, than to admit that they were wrong. You shouldn't even interact with these people. I don't care if they blood, they that that's your man of eight years, that's your friend. Don't even, that's, that's demonic. 
People that can admit when they're wrong or like if you be, you're the bigger person and you try to apologize and they can't even, you know, set their ego aside and their shame aside to be like, hey, I'm sorry. Why would you even want to deal with people like that? Take a trash bag and throw the whole friend group away. Take a trash bag, throw the whole man away. Take a trash bag, throw the whole family away. You're going to F with your mental health when you do that. Stop doing that. Oh my gosh. I used to do that all the time. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, you don't even deserve from, from my, you don't even deserve my forgiveness for real because of what you did. I over, I, I forgave you. And guess what? You, you be the bigger person. You apologize. Less than two months later, they do something else shady and snake to you. That happened to me. Oh my goodness. I will forgive someone for something or I forgive my man for something. And then he do it again. They don't care that you went out your way to apologize to them. Like I said, in their mind, toxic people, narcissistic people, there's people that they, they will never admit they're wrong. There's people that never admit that they're wrong and it will drive you crazy. And because they know you have a big heart, you're going to just kiss their ass. You're not going to hold them accountable. Hold people accountable that hurt you. If you know you're not wrong and they was dead ass wrong and they're not texting your phone, they're not calling you to make things right, why are you going out your way to make things right? You desperate? Stop doing that. Stand on business, okay? That's how that's how boundaries get created. It's, it's not gonna it's not gonna be a good feeling. You're probably gonna be hurt because it's like, dang, I can't like I don't wanna stand on business. Like I, I love my man, I wanna get right. But if he's not calling and apologizing to you, knowing that he was wrong for having another woman text his phone or whatever the case. If your sibling know that they was wrong and they trying to like, they're going around talking about you saying that, you know, instead of apologizing, they just talking behind your back. That's demon. That's a demonic spirit you're working with. Good hearted people, when they hurt you, they're going to be the one to quickly apologize to you first and make it right first. Healthy relationships, when you have healthy people in your life, they're going to communicate effectively. They're, number one, you guys are rarely going to get into it because people who have good hearts and people who really love you for you, really love you and um, cherish the relationship or the friendship that you guys have, they're not going to do snake weird stuff that you're going to have to address. I, ain't ha I never had no friend tell me or, you know, you know, what you, you was fake when you did this. They might not talk to me because um, <laughs> one thing about me, I'm a crash out. I tend to bottle things in and then and then I let it all out. And, and one thing about me, like when I'm mad, I'm really mad. And I feel like that just makes people be like, oh no, I'm not dealing with that. And it's like, I don't mean it. It's just like, dang, like I accepted so much mistreatment from you. How dare you, you know what I'm saying? Like I have like me crashing out is justified because of certain stuff you did. How I reacted wasn't justified, but I wouldn't be crashing out if you didn't do weird stuff to me over and over again you ever had someone do stuff to you over and over again you sweep it under the rug because it's small and then the small things turn into something big and then you wake up one day and you realize yo this girl is not my friend this man is not this man actually hates me he doesn't love me he actually hates me because ain't no way i forgave him for cheating on me and he gonna cheat again that's why they always say never take back a cheater because when you take back a, che a cheater you know you're showing the man that you know even though he cheated and he did you dirty, you took him back. In his mind, men don't say this, but they lose respect for you. When you accept people back in your life that mistreated you, the respect is gone. That's why they do it again. Because they know that, oh, that person, that person, that person is fiending for me to be in their life. Okay? You, you got them feeling themselves a little bit too much. Choose you in this season and every season and then the rest of your life. Choose you. Let's move on to number two. How to stop people pleasing and stand on your business. Number two is, whew, all right, this is how to stop people pleasing. I want you to remove anyone in your life that makes you feel guilty when you tell them no. I want you to understand that this is emotional abuse and manipulation. I noticed with ungrateful ass people, you could go out your way for them a million times. Anytime they call you, 
Oh, can you come to this event? Come to that event? You're like, yeah, I got you. Hey, girl, can you watch my baby? Yeah, I got you. The minute you can't use their, you know, they can't use your car or whatever the case may be, whatever favor, the one time that you can't come through for them, they're going to talk about you like a dog to everyone. They're going to go on Instagram and sub you, talk about you like you like like a dog. There's so many people that benefit that that literally directly benefited from you and they act like you never did nothing. I noticed that about ungrateful people. That's what hurts the most. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have a lot of you have experienced that where you always going out your way for people, right? And the minute you can't do something, you're just public enemy number one and they can't stand you. Once again, that's narcissistic. You don't need those type of people in your life. If I ask you for a favor, you can't do it. Okay, no problem. It's cool. I'm not going to hold any animosity towards it. Because you know what? Honestly speaking, nobody owes you a thing in life. So if somebody goes out their way and, and um, um, helps you out, you know, that that's cool. If they can't, they can't. It's not no big deal. But when you take it to the further extent and now you, 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 you know, you question this person's loyalty to you, a person shouldn't question your loyalty and love to them just because you can't do something for them or you're not comfortable doing something for them. Let's say you have someone that wants to move in your house and you know you're the type of person you need a lot of, you probably have OCD, you're a clean freak and you know, you don't like people in your house. You can't afford it, literally. When people move into your house, everything goes up. Your light bill, your water bill, you know, the, your food, your grocery bill, everything goes up. It's a big responsibility. They don't see it like that. They see it like, wow, you're supposed to be my, you're supposed to be my sister. You're supposed to be my friend. You're supposed to be, why I can't, why you can't do me this? I'm really going through stuff. I want you to understand to all my big hearted people out there, someone else's emergency is not your crisis. Don't let people make you feel bad because you can't, do a favor that's going to drastically impact you yourself. Like, like I said, someone moving into your life, that dramatically affects your life. That You have to learn to say no, okay? You have to learn to say no. And I'm telling you right now, nine times out of ten, the people that's asking for all these big favors from you, you can't even ask them to do the, there, there's always a person that's always asking you for money. You can't ask them for money. There's always a person that, you know what I'm saying, that always trauma dump your, you know, their relationship on you, but they never, not once. Every time you, you get on the phone with them, they're telling you, oh, girl, I'm going through this, and he did this and that, and you're making sure they're good mentally. But how many people call you and check on your mental health? Out of all the people you look out for, how many times? How many times you go on, you, you look at your phone, right? You go on your phone. Do you get a phone call from these people? It's usually the person that's always there for someone, you know, like, like it's always a person that you can, th that they can call and trauma dump on you and tell you this and that, but they never ask how you doing or they never say, hey, if you need anything, let me know. You got to be careful when you have a loving, giving heart because what's going to happen is people's going to take and take and take and then you're gonna feel you're gonna be left feeling depleted, feeling used, and highly taken advantage of. But I'm letting you know right now, you can't blame people for taking advantage of you. It's your fault because you didn't stop it. That's why having boundaries is so important. Having boundaries is the highest level of self-love. I never had boundaries. I used to I used to, I remember I, I would I was telling, I remember I blew up at someone. Like, I'm so tired of it. You know, people is always ask me for stuff. I'm always going out my way for y'all. And y'all never, y'all never there for me. Y'all never there for me. Y'all gonna play on my birthday? Y'all, y'all really play what? I, I I go out my way for you and I do this and that. And this is how y'all treat me on my birthday. This is how I'm treated on Christmas. I'm getting what? Because I'm just I'm, I'm the type of person I'm giving out lavish gifts and I'm, you know what I'm saying? And you don't even, you don't even, sometimes you don't even have to ask me. I just be like, here you go, here you go, here you go. And they're going to love you in that moment. What? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then one day I realized like, hold on Paige, <laughs> out of everybody you ever helped in your life, who, who, who helped you? If you need help paying your bills, who can you call? No one. No one. That's when, that's when I realized, oh, okay, 
I feel stupid. <laughs> I feel used. I feel taken advantage of. God, what should I do? And God told me, baby girl, you got to have to have boundaries. But I was scared to have boundaries because it led me to number three. God told me, baby girl, you got to train your boundaries to be stronger than your empathy. I can't, I can't even take credit for that. I know, I know, I know what you think. Like, ooh, that was powerful. I saw that. It was, uh, it was a post on Instagram. And it resonated with me so bad because I had to learn that. I had to learn to train my boundaries to be stronger than my empathy. Do you know what that means? Okay. I just want you to know that what that means is, I'm reading, I, I wrote it down. What, what that means is if anyone violates your boundaries, I want you to, God, I feel like this is what God told me. If anyone violates your boundaries, right, or you feel taken advantage of taken advantage of, right? Be prepared to fall out with anyone in your life, okay? It doesn't matter if you end up single and lonely. That's okay. When I was a people pleaser, I had many friends. I had a roster full of guys. I like, like I just... I just felt like everyone wanted a piece of me. Everybody wanted, everybody loved me. Everybody wanted to invite me places, this and that. People invited me places, you know why? Because it could be a table of five people. Who's paying for it? I'm paying for it. Because I feel like when God bless you financially, you gotta bless other people. But you know what I realized quickly? That when, you, when you're when so used to blessing people and paying for stuff, there's gonna be a point where you, you get invited and nobody's even gonna look at the check. They just, oh yeah, Paige got it. When that, when, when being nice turns into entitlement, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Once, once I realized like, oh, <laughs> people are getting a little too comfortable with me doing this and that. I'm just doing it out of the kindness of my heart. I'm a generous person. But once I, once I start feeling like it's expected and not appreciated, that's when God told me you got to have boundaries. If you just have a person that you, you always do for people, not because you want anything in return. That's just you. You're a giver. Givers need to have other givers in their life. You know what I'm saying? I remember I had a one, I had a, I had a friend. This girl matched my energy. She went, she's the only person that in my whole entire life that understood the assignment when it comes to my birthday. I mean, blown away. You know what I'm saying? Like she got me a beautiful, beautiful um Hermes bracelet, and she just, she just um she gave me like $600 on my birthday with a nice, beautiful gift. You know, I had an a all pink, I had an all pink um, birthday theme birthday and she dressed up, you know, she was like, my, my outfit is inspired by you because I know you love Clueless. Every time we, we, we go on, on a trip, you know, you always watching Clueless on the plane. So I wore a Clueless outfit and I don't even care about how much money she gave me or whatever. It was just that she pays attention to me so, so in detail. It brought me to tears. So thoughtful brought me to tears because I know when I give gifts to people, I'm so thoughtful. Like I, I before I buy a gift for someone, I'm like, how would this person, how would this make a person feel when they open it? Are they going to be happy? Because are they going to be in tears? Like, what is it? Right? I, I You know, I just... My, that's my thing. Like, I love to make people feel loved and appreciated. And she made me feel so loved. We're not cool no more. But one thing about me, I'm a real one. Okay? I'm a real one. I don't care if we had a fallout. I always appreciate the people that... that I don't care if we fall out. I'm not... I, I don't really look at the negative so much because we're all imperfect. I'm not perfect. As much as I could think I was a good friend to some, some people might not think I was a good friend to you. You know what I'm saying? And I, I'll, I'll be quick to apologize and be like, if I wasn't a good friend because I thought I was, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. I don't ever want to invalidate nobody's feelings because I know how it feels to not feel seen, heard, and validated. So it's very important to me that the people that I do have in my life, that they feel seen and validated. My issue is that I quickly had to learn is that I'm so big on and validating, which, you know, and qu quickly apologizing. And I realized I never got that energy back. I was always met with, yeah, okay, you know, you apologize. Okay, like, let's move forward. But I never felt seen and heard and validated. I never felt appreciated. So when I had a friend go all out for me like that, it stayed with me. And my that, that birthday was three or four years ago. I still think about it. Because it's like, 
Oh my gosh. I finally met someone that matched my energy. It's a beautiful thing. That's why, and I told myself like, any relationship I'm in, that person got to match my energy. If, I, if I'm if i dating a guy and he's cheap and stingy, I don't even want to deal with you. Because it's not even about you spending money on me. It's about the fact that I'm the type to spend money on you. So when you cheap and stingy, that, that shit turns me off. You know what I'm saying? If I have a friend and I look out for you, like, you know, she's like, oh, I don't got no money to go out. Girl, I got you, right? And you never, not once said, oh, I got you, I'll pay for you. I don't want it. And it's not that I want to be tit for tat. It's that after a while, it's going to, <laughs> one-sided relationships and friendships leaves you drained. You feel taken advantage of. When you're always doing good things for people out of the kindness of your heart and they take, 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 and they don't do it for you, it doesn't make you feel good. You're going to feel like, oh no, that person is, especially, you know, they never volunteer. Or if you have, let's, someone, let's say you have someone in your life that you, you always there for, I don't know, financially, and you left your wallet at home and um, they're like, oh girl, I paid for you. But later on that night, they're like, hey girl, can you sell me the money from, um, from dinner? In your mind, you're going to be like, wait, I pay for this girl all the time. Why can't she just pay for this one meal? That's what I'm talking about with the one-sided relationships. You got to stay away from fake-ass people like that. Because there are people like that. You can look out for them all the time when you go out to eat. The minute you, the, the one time you don't got it, they, they, they're going to pay for you, but they want you, to, they want you to pay them back. You think that's a good person to be around? You think that's a good, great person to be around? Good luck. Good luck. One day you're going to wake up and you're going to feel so dumb. Like, oh my gosh. And after everything you've done... Right? They're going to go and slander your name and talk about you and this, that, and the third. That's, that's what happens. Story of my life. That's what happens. And I know that's the story of a lot of you guys' lives. That's why I have to do this video. Because I know a lot of you probably feel like, what's wrong with me? I'm, oh, I'm, I'm such a kind person. I keep getting taken advantage of. Because you do too much. You over love. You over give. You do too much. You got to chill out. Especially if you're not getting that same energy back, you got to chill out. And be prepared to be single and lonely. One thing about me, I... Psh, I always say this in my video. I'm okay with sitting at the table by myself. You know, I'm okay. You have to be around people that you, you pour into, right? You pour into and they also fill your cup. That's how every relationship in your life is going to succeed. If you find yourself always in toxic relationships, toxic friendships, and you, you always end up hurt, it's because you never set the boundary. You never set the tone. You let people treat you any type of way. You apologize first because you feel like life is too short and you want to be the bigger person. Sometimes being too good will get you being really hurt. You got to learn to take a step back. Take, take a step back. I had to learn that this year. And like I said, in the beginning, it's going to feel, you're gonna, it's, having boundaries is going to suck because when you tell people your boundaries, they're going to take it as, oh, you changed up. A lot of people tell me, oh, you changed. I'm still the same loving, nice, sweet person. I'm just, I just say no. When I don't feel like doing something, I'm going to say no. No, and that does not make me a bad person. Sorry, I can't make it to your event. No, sorry, I can't let you borrow $200. No. Even if I have it, no. Because... Once people get used to you giving out money and paying, it's going to be expected instead of appreciating. I had to learn that. And you got to learn that too. Okay, and that's pretty much my video, guys, on how to stop people pleasing and stand on your boundaries. I hope this video resonated with you ladies. I don't want you guys getting taken advantage of another day. Okay, and I know it feels uncomfortable to say no. But once you've been in a position where you got used and abused by people, it's going <laughs> to, baby, it's, it's going to be very easy for you. And let me tell you something. The right people in your life, they're going to honor your boundaries. They're not going to judge you and criticize you for it. The people that are users, manipulators, toxic people that was using you, they're going to have a big problem with you saying no. They're going to be like, oh, who you think you are? Like, why? What What got into you? They're not even going to want to hang out with you no more because you're no longer paying for food now. All of a sudden, you're not going to have no friends because you, the, the, the girl that's always paying, right? She, 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 she has the nerve to, to say she ain't paying no more. What? She changed up. She's stingy now. I'm not stingy. 
I just realized that I'm doing things for you that you ain't never thought to do for me. And, and it's not tip for tap. It's not tip for tap. It's just you it's very you gotta pour a, a relationship or a friendship only works if two people is pouring into. If one person is pouring, you know, it's, come on. And, and, and it's not the narcissist that always lose. It's not the narcissist that always get hurt. It's it's the kind hearted ones. It's the good it's the ones that have the good heart that end up with the mental health issues, that end up with the anxiety disorders. Google it. Uh 99% of people that go through toxic relationships with friends and family and whatever relationships, they all suffer from depression and anxiety. You gave so much of yourself that you are so depleted and drained. Is it worth it? Not to me. Not to me. You want to have people in your life like the friend that I mentioned earlier. You know, I poured into her, right? And she always looked out for me. When we went out to eat, she always looked out for me. It made me want to just look out for her. It made me want to love her more. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's that's a good that's a good balance. I know how that friendship made me feel. I didn't. I never felt used. I always felt appreciated, loved, and valued. You know what I'm saying? The love was there because it was reciprocated. So I just want you to guys to you know keep that in, keep that keep this video in your mind, and it's not going to be an easy transition. You know, slowly start saying no to people. If you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. If you promise to go out and you, you don't feel like going out, uh, if you, you promise your friend to go out with her on Friday, Friday come, you really don't feel like it, stay home. You don't know what God's protecting you from. You don't know if God, you, the reason why you don't want, you want to stay home is because y'all finna get into a car crash that night. Stop being a people pleaser. It gets you nowhere, okay? The people that love you is going to respect your decisions that you make. They're not going to make you feel guilty for it. They're not going to guilt trip you about it, manipulate you about it. They're going to leave you alone. And they're going to love you the same. I promise you. You see how y'all love me? My Bella gang love me? Y'all love me for me? Y'all tune in for me? It's nothing. You're, you're not gaining nothing? That's why I have a lot of respect for my subscribers. I love y'all so much you have no idea when you guys be like oh sis i love you change my life no y'all change my life y'all show me what unconditional love is y'all y'all poured into me when you don't with no motive what is the motive what is the motive you you're not gaining any type of money by commenting that you love me y'all pour into me i pour into you guys and we are family the reason why you guys feel so loved watching me is because i genuinely love y'all I, and, I, and when I read my comments, I just feel it's just so much love on my channel. It's so much. We we see each other. My Bella gang, we see each other. Nobody knows me like y'all know me. Y'all don't even know me in real life. Y'all know my heart and my soul. Y'all know me. And y'all know I ain't perfect. I ain't, I ain't perfect. But y'all know we here. And that's how all the relationships in your life should be. Anyways, y'all. I feel like I keep talking. I need to... And this video, but I love you guys. Until next time, Bella Gang or No Gang. I love you.